Everybody, this is Brother Frank, and welcome to another episode of the Remnant Call. I'm so glad to be here with you. It's the opening. We're recording tonight. This will go live on uh, Friday. This is Thursday evening, and I'm recording on the opening night of Hanukkah. And uh, was just earlier celebrating uh, with my friends here um, who are believers and Yeshua and Jesus. We just were so thankful that in the darkness right now, as crazy as everything is, there is hope. There is a light. And there is a way for us to follow that is all the way to the end. That promise that the Lord said, I will never leave you nor forsake you is what we claim right now. And I'm excited because in this world of chaos tonight, I have a very special guest, and that's going to be Pastor Benjamin Faircloth. He is the president and the founder of World Outreach Ministries International and the United Church. BenjaminFaircloth.com is his website. I can I can go on and on about all the things that do, but if you're not familiar with him, check out his YouTube videos. Check out his website. Um, he is a pastor, but he's also a, a, a not only just a spirit-filled believer, but he's got a message for the world in this hour. And so I'm not going to delay even one second longer. I'm going to bring on Pastor Faircloth with us. Pastor Benjamin, are you here? Yes, sir. Brother Frank, thanks so much for having me on. Amen. Brother, I'm just going to open up with a word of prayer tonight, and I want to jump right into this thing because I am so excited. Uh, I'm going to share a little bit about how we've gotten to this journey here. It's been quite a struggle, but God has gotten (laughs) us here. So, Father, in the name above every name, Jesus, I thank you so much for the blessing to have Pastor Faircloth on the program. And Lord, I ask tonight that you would just anoint his lips, anoint mine, Lord, that this program would be truly uplifting to you, Father, that if you were lifted up, the promise would not only be claimed, but be seen of the all men would be drawn unto you, Lord. And I believe that because we've asked it in Jesus' name. And thank you for that, Lord. We come against every principality and we put ask for a mighty warring hedge of angels around this program tonight. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. There's no place for you here because we've asked this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor, uh, if you could, there are some people of our audience I know are familiar with you, but there are many that also are hearing about you from the first time. Could you share for a moment what you do, uh, what's your what your ministry, what goes on at your church and everything? Share a little bit about that. Well, again, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I'm super humbled by it and, and blessings to everybody that's listening. Uh, yeah, just a little information. We're located in Livonia, Georgia. We're just south of heaven. Uh, if you will, uh, in the Northeast Georgia. It's a beautiful area. And uh, uh, our website is ignitedchurchlife.com. That's where you can get all of our ministry information. We have a a global feeding program, a world missions program, where our vision is to reach 5 million souls for Jesus before he comes. And uh, we're very humanitarian oriented uh, after the late, great Dr. Lester Sumrall, who was one of my mentors, and so we're just a, a ministry that's boots on the ground and um, really concerned about humanity and concerned about, you know, God's people in Israel and all the uh, the other nations of the world, very active in the 1040 window. And uh, basically Ignited Church exists to exalt Jesus, to glorify his name, to be a safe haven, to be a hospital, to be a refuge, to be a safe place for folks to come to. Uh, whether it's through the media platforms or physically here, uh, and just give them the true meat and true word, the true bread of life, uh, in a time where deception and and uh, you know disgrace to the body of Christ has come in a rapid form, uh, you know God is looking for true shepherds. So we're we're attempting to do that by following the shepherd, and uh, I'm just thrilled to be with you and and a remnant call. And uh, thank you for the the uh, invitation and the opportunity to speak to to your people that God's given you. Amen. Praise God. And folks, I just want to tell you, it's been a journey. Pastor um, Faircloth was supposed to be on last week. Um, it didn't work out. I was like, you know, I I run, I work in IT. I've been doing this for a long time, and. The devil was trying hard to prevent our emails from getting back and forth and ultimately didn't happen. But praise God, my 
earthly father was here on the program, which I was blessed to have. And um, we talked a, a little bit about the pastor, about the pride that mm-hmm. is causing this nation to not see the truth to the hour that we are in. It's blinding to them, but it's what, what really calls to my attention in this hour was when Jude mentioned pastor that we are to contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. He he said that, and then he says it's because there were men who came in from old who were ungodly, lascivious. They were teaching a basically a cheap form of grace. Right. They took the grace of God and turned it into licentiousness. And I think that's what you were saying earlier about the body of Christ and the disgrace to the Lord with the licentiousness that is going on in the in the so-called church today. Yeah, absolutely. And the Apostle Paul dealt with it. This is nothing new because there's nothing new under the sun. There's just the 2.0 of it all. There's just the steroids of it all. It's the increase of it all because the, the devil realizes, Satan realizes his time is short. So therefore he increases his warfare, he increases his attacks. But thanks be unto God, as the devil comes in like a flood, I like to change the comma, like a flood, the Lord raises up a standard against him. So it's an encouraging message at the same time, because even though it's it's getting darker, it's going to get very bright, very bright for the church of Jesus Christ. We just got to go through, through uh, some cleansing. That's what's happening right now. The house is being cleansed. The Lord has suddenly coming to his temple. And that's why you're seeing exposure. You're seeing that lasciviousness, the, the degradation, the debaucheries. And it's coming to the surface, if you will, like like you're boiling something. And that's exactly in this cauldron that we're living in. That's exactly what has to happen. So uh, if you're rooted in the gr- in the word, you're grounded and you understand prophetic realities and understand the word of faith, then you're at total peace during this hour. We're going to get into that because I have a message from the Lord for your people and for anybody that's listening today. Uh, concerning fear, anxiety, and worry that exist in the body of Christ. And uh, for good reason, but there's a better reason to live in the power of God. And we'll get to that. But yeah, absolutely dark days, but uh, it's exciting days nonetheless, Brother Frank. Absolutely. And, and Pastor, you, I, I see so often that even believers, there's this hope that I think in the back of the mind and and look, folks, I, I served in the Marines. I, I loved this country. You know, I fought for this country because I believed, but I, I now serve the Lord and I'm in his army and I'm in his military now. And there seems to be this, and I, I feel it's, it's really misguided this hope that, well, maybe if Trump could win, things will turn around. You know what I mean? Or maybe right. pastor, uh, you shared about the downward spiral. This country is in just recently on your, um, on your show, um, share about what the concern is of, of putting our, you know, the false reality that I think some people are still carrying in their minds of maybe this turnaround for the country. Well, you know, hope deferred makes the heart sick and we got a lot of sick people out there and that sickness has turned to anger. It's turned to rage. It's turned to nationalism. It's turned into a negativity that's taking and hijacked the kingdom message and made it a nationalistic patriotic type of message which that's not that's not kingdom the kingdom is the king his kingdom come his will be done uh the healing the casting out the uh, you know of devils uh just operating like jesus did and i think what's happened is is we have allowed deception to come into the church and it's caused people to be pulled away with like QAnon and all these other conspiracy um the tactics of the enemy and and they've dressed it up in, in in a cross and a coat and a robe if you will and they've made it christianity christianity type of thing and so many people were deceived by it i i fought it for for many years from this pulpit trying because that was my assignment trying to bring the body of christ out of that deception because it wasn't right there was no making america great again there was no political solution to a sin-soaked situation, and the prophetic seals of reality were were being revealed to us. And during that time, the Lord spoke to my heart and said, there's a Jeremiah seal over America, and you, you can't change that. And that was my message, and I got a lot of flack. I had people leave me, and people hate me, and 
uh, still will talk to me today uh, over the political divide, which is fine uh, in the sense of I'm not going to compromise. This whole world lies under the power of the evil one. I didn't write that. That's what the word says. The Bible declares in, in Peter that this whole thing's going to burn up. Again, I didn't write that. The Lord wrote that. He said that. So a lot of times I think we put a false hope into trying to restore something that God is going to destroy. We should be looking at restoring humanity as far as salvation, the man, the, 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 the marriage, the family, the home unit, instead of trying to, uh, you know, to fix the Hegelian dialect that is already at opposition against us, as you're familiar, your audience, I'm sure, is familiar with that terminology. And it's all a play and a ploy by the enemy. But, you know, you get these people that sound right, look right. They, you know, they got pastors and big buck preachers persuading the people that, no, we can do this. We can turn this country around. And it's it was absolute deception. So uh, I think we're getting out of that, even though there's still the fog of that, the fog of that type of war. But I am seeing in my own life and ministry, people who are finally waking up and recognizing and realizing that truly Jesus is the only way, he's the only answer, and what he said in his word will come to pass. You know, I, I thank you for that, and that's a good word, um, folks. I, it is a false hope because it really what it's saying is that there's a man who could deliver or there's somebody in our government who can make a change. When the truth is we have passed the point of, you know, we're the number one exporters of pornography. We are the large, you know, the child trafficking, everything that's going on in this country and thinking that God's just going to wink his eye. And, and, you know, he's been very merciful for very long, but there is a thing in the Bible when the cup becomes full. And I believe we are at that very full point right yes. now in this nation. And then you see the world uh, scene that's going on and the deception and the the hatred, the anti-Semitism, the the just the the I don't even understand sometimes the confusion that's going on. And it's no different from the world scene and the blatant lies to the churches that are preaching the same exact lies that are going on. And pastor, we're just in need of a new path um, called Jesus and to basically shut down because what I see is there are people waking up, but the divide is getting deeper because those that are not, they're taking it to the opposite extreme. Yeah. And I feel that's day. We are, we are seeing the polarization and even where the Bible talks about the enemies are those sometimes of your own house. Yeah, no doubt. And Jesus said these would be the thing. So I think from a stable point of view, a Christian who knows the Word of God should look at what Jesus said, take it for what it means, deal with it, digest it, settle it in their hearts, and say, okay, this is the way it's going to be. You want it to be, be divided, you want to go darker, you want to go further, that's up to you, but I'm going to get louder, I'm going to get brighter, I'm going to get stronger in the things of God, because I recognize and realize that you know my finest hour is now. And I'm going to reach as many as I possibly can. I'm going to plunder hell to populate heaven. And uh, if you don't like it and don't like the message, uh, you know, there's nothing I can do about you. I just know what I've been told to say. And I think if we take that tenacity, and that is not being brash unto bruise, that is being brash unto being bold and saying, look, I'm not going to, I'm not purposely running you over. I'm just telling you, if you're in opposition of me, if you're an enemy of the cross, uh, if you're an enemy of yourself, I'm gonna do all I can to try to convince you, but but you're not you're not going to change my direction, and and I think brother Frank, if we could just start getting some tenacity back in the body of Christ, getting some boldness back, becoming a warrior again for Christ instead of this you know skinny jeans wimps that we have in the pulpits today, yes, and you know uh, whatever uh, Starbuck people, if we can just become again disciples of Jesus Christ, following him wherever he goes. Uh, I really think that we could we can turn people's lives upside down. Uh, I'm not trying to change America. I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about America. America's toast. It's done. It's been written. Uh, we are Mystery Babylon. 
If you don't like yes. that, we are Babylon. If you don't like that, we're the daughter of Babylon. <laughs> Uh, however you want to uh, title America, we are you know this den of thieves. And I'm not trying to salvage this thing. What I'm trying to do is is bring bring people to the saving knowledge of Christ first, and then get his his innocent ones, his his ones that are listening right now. They're just confused, man. They're they're worried. They, they don't know who to listen to. They hear so much to bring them back to Bible basics back to faith, rooted and grounded truth to where they can trust again the Word of God. And, and, and let me tell you, the, the greatest way to be confused about theology is listen to a scholar. Listen to somebody who's some type of theologian. We need to get back to the Bible. We need to get back to the Holy Ghost teaching us. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, folks, if you don't know, there is there are many scholars that don't even actually believe in the Bible. They're still scholars. They're atheistic sure. scholars. That's a fact. Yep. You can look it up. Um, and there are many scholars that have some of the craziest theology that you've ever listened to. Mm-hmm. Um, so the pastor Faircloth is a hundred percent on pastor. My question is right now, I know we've talked about it on the remnant call. America is toast. We've deceived the nations. We've sent out our, our, our sorcery, our, our pharmacia. We've done all these things. We've deceived the whole world as revelation chapter 18 talked about. But if you're a believer right now and knowing that this country's toast, but what does that mean for us right now as believers? Does that change our mission? I mean, are we to go hide in a hole or, or, or what are we supposed to do right now? Yeah, that's a great Holy Ghost setup, because that's the word that I have for your audience tonight. And I want to share that with you. And it just segues perfectly. And the Lord dropped this in my spirit. And and, and I've been actually preaching this in in phases over the past uh, maybe five or six years. But learning how to live in Babylon, learning how to live in Babylon, that's been the theme of our ministry, though it hasn't been something I've said as far as openly like, hey, phase one, phase two, phase three, but he's been teaching us from this pulpit here and leading me as a pastor to bring people to the realization, you have to learn how to settle it, settle it. Let me take you there to Jeremiah 29. If you guys got your Bibles, take a time, uh, take some time to read a bit. It says, now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the residue of the elders, which were carried away captive. Now we're carried away. We're a captive nation. There's no doubt about it. And to the priests and to the prophets and to all the people to whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. Here's the first thing about settling it. You got to recognize and realize we're no longer in Jerusalem. This isn't Kansas anymore, Dorothy. This isn't the promised land that we were told about when I was in grade school and uh, all the great achievements I could be and these different things, all that's a farce. That was a fantasy. That was actually propaganda. Uh, Little did I know because they didn't hand that to me. That wasn't my future. Uh, And so we have to recognize that. Then it goes on in verse two. After that, Jeconiah the king and the queen and the eunuchs And the princes of Judah and Jerusalem and the carpenters and the smiths were departed from Jerusalem. It's a very important reason why he put that in verse 2, because the best of the best were taken out of the country. The best of the best. And this nation has lost the best of the best. I'm not saying we don't have great people. Of course we do. But we've lost the cutting edge. We've lost being number one worldwide in many, many categories. Brother Frank, I don't even have to go over it. And uh, it's it's a shame how far we have fallen. Verse 3, by the hand of Elazar, the son of Shaphan, and Jamara, the son of Halkiah, whom Zedekiah, the king of Judah, uh, sent unto Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, saying, watch this, verse 4, thus saith the, the, the Lord of hosts, who said this, God, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, from whom I caused, notice these words, read the Bible, whom I have caused. Who did it? God did it. God caused us to go into captivity. Why? Because of our sin. Because we will not repent as a nation. To be carried away from where? Our Jerusalem unto Babylon. 
verse five. Here, here's where I want you to see. Build ye houses and dwell in them. That's a King James translation, but really a better translation. It means to settle in. Settle in. What is he telling them to do? He's telling them to build the houses and settle into where? Babylon. And plant gardens and eat the fruit of, their, uh, of them. And then he says, verse 6, take wives and begot sons and daughters. You have to take time for homework and read the rest of chapter 29. I'm going to stop there because I'm a preacher, and I'll take up all this time. But I'm going to tell you right now, what he's telling the church today, just like he told them, he told them to settle it in Babylon, build, live, plant, marry, do kingdom things, do what you're supposed to do. Whatever's at your hand, go do it. Don't go look for a bomb shelter, beanie weenies, and 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 you know all this stuff that you know. And some of it's important. Don't get me wrong. I prep. I believe we teach it. We've been doing it for years. But I'm gonna tell you something. It's the inner man, the core man, of your spiritual walk with God. That's what's going to keep you when all hell breaks loose in a greater dimension in America. And you're going to have to learn how to settle it. When you do, it'll help you with your fear. You're an anxiety, your 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 anger, much anger, much rage is here. But brother Frank, I believe this is the antidote and the answer to learn how to settle and learn how to live in Babylon. Well, hey, Pastor, please, this is your platform tonight. So preach on. I just that brings me to the verse right here, and I think which is the which is the crux of this, or the the really the focal point of this entire verse. And I want you to expand a little bit about that because I think that's really the tendency where we miss it. And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Now, I share that from a story from a man I dearly uh, loved was a pastor. And you know, I'm, I, I just loved his teaching years and years ago. And I remember he was teaching on the spirit of the living God years ago. And he was talking mm-hmm. about how he would go out to this um to this place every year, his, his parishioners would give him, uh, you know, some time off to go rekindle his own relationship with the Lord. And it was yeah. somewhere in, maybe in Utah, or I don't know, it was some, somewhere out in the middle of nowhere out West. And it was freezing cold and there was snow. And he said he had a little bit of a cold. So he decided to do one of those hot, cold, uh, showers to try to, you know, loosen things up. Yeah. And he really wanted to take this time to really seek the Lord and to have more of God. And he turned on the cold water to do the cold part. And he said when he hit that shower and he got in there, it hit him so hard, it took his breath away how cold that water is. And he said right at that moment, the Lord broke through and said, when you want me as bad as you want your next breath, Mm. you can have me. Yeah. I've never forgot that. I heard that probably almost 20 years ago. Yeah. And I... When that verse right there just burns within my soul when I read that about yeah. God's desire. So, Pastor, please, this is your program. So, talk all you want. But that to me, I don't know about you. That feels like that's what God's calling from this verse. Yeah. Yeah. You have to, but you have to take it into context. And what is the context? You're in captivity. The context is you are in mm, captivity. Yes. You're in chains. You're in bondage. You're in a place you don't want to be. This isn't natural. This isn't the America I grew up in. This isn't the, you know, watching these politicians. I mean, what's next? Duels? I mean, let's go back to back six paces and just start shooting. I mean, we're, we're at this point where we're at civil war. Um, there, there's no doubt about it. So you, you're, you're seeing an unraveling. But in the midst of that, in the settling in Babylon, verse 13, that's why I didn't keep going, because you could just sit here and just just we could do this for two or three days and pull this apart. And this is this is what irritates me as a pastor is that we'll take scriptures like this and we'll use it as uh, you know the bread of life, pull out a quick little card and read it for your day and that's your scripture. And then we don't go into context. And when you get into context, it makes it more powerful because that's the that's the relative truth. The relative truth was they were in deep trouble. And God says, look, seek me. That's verse 13. Seek and you shall find me. 
and you shall seek me and you shall find me. Where? In captivity. I'm going to find him in this captivity. I'm going to see more of God than I ever have in my time of struggle. And it's a fact. It, it's, all, it's, it's part of the crushing. That's where the anointing comes from. It's part of the crushing. The only way you're going to see the glory of God is to be crushed. The glory of God doesn't come in a cathedral. The glory of God comes in the garden. It comes in the place of pain. It comes in the place of struggle. It comes in the place where I have splinters on my back from the cross that I carry for the shame that I receive and the reproach for serving the lamb. He did it, but you think I'm going to get away with it? It's impossible. We, we want the resurrection, but nobody wants to go through the crucifixion. Well, you can't get to the resurrection without crucifixion. And, and so we have it all messed up in the church. We have a painless Christianity, and that is not the gospel. The gospel is a gospel of endurance. It's a gospel of being crushed, and it's a gospel of being resurrected out of that crushing. And that's when the sweet aroma comes. That's when the anointing comes. That's when the glory comes. And we have missed it, Frank. We've missed it because our shepherds are more worried about nickels and noses we're more worried about clicks. We're more worried about uh, monetization and the money that we make and all these different things rather than being true disciples of Jesus Christ. And there's a payday coming. There's a payday coming for what we've done. We've merchandised the anointing of Yeshua. We've merchandised it. And he's coming to the house. He's cleansing the house. He's exposing the charlatans, the witches, and the warlocks. And more is going to come. More is going to come to the body of Christ. You're going to see high, high powered, high named people, if you will. You're going to see them fall before God like, like Dagon. You're going to see it in the house of God. And it has to be. So, anyways, getting back to that scripture, let, let's look at it again. And he actually go to verse 12. Then you shall call upon me and, and you shall go up and pray unto me. Notice that you got to go do something. You know, it's the hardest time to pray is when you're in trouble in Babylon. But that's when he said, do it. Go do it now. Go do it now. If you do any type of exercise, you know it's the worst time is when you're tired. But it's the best time. You get more out of it, right? And you push your body. And I will hearken unto you. Then he says, and you shall seek me and find me. And you shall search for me with half of your heart. Nope. With all of your heart. Why is that all of your heart? Because in the act of... And the time of desperation is when we seek him the most. I'm telling you, brother, we have missed endurance in the church. We've missed the crushing. We've missed it. And I'm not talking about, you know, looking at God as some abuser. We're not talking about that. We're just talking about the humility. A humble and contrite heart, oh God, that will not despise. Lord, if I learn how to bend my heart now. You know, the old revivalists used to say, bend me. Bend me, God, bend me. The whole congregation would cry out, bend me. And what it meant was the Holy Spirit to just come and wreck the place and just melt their hearts before an almighty God. We don't do that anymore. We say, bless me, bless me, bless me. No, we got to go to captivity. We have to be here because I believe, Brother Frank, the true church, the Revelation chapter 19 bride, the Ephesians church is going to come out of great persecution, great crushing, great pain, great endurance, great suffering. There's no other way out of this. We got to learn how to welcome that. And that's not easy. Wow. Thank you. I mean, pastor, thank you. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm sitting in a worship service right now because he's so right folks. It, when we started off in Jude, when the Bible says, he said to contend for the faith. And and that I looked up that word. It means to strive. Like we are to actually yeah. uh, God, God's part is to take care of everything else. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all things shall be added unto you. Your job is to seek the Lord. His job is to take care of everything else. But what the pastor was saying is we got to get in there and pray yeah. and actually seek him. With our heart, because I, I, Pastor, I believe God is calling us. The world sees devastation. I believe God sees harvest. Yeah. If yeah. He's got, but we need workers. Yep. 
Yeah, we, we, we need workers who see the blueprint, who get it. You know, I'm, I'm you and I talk off 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 the uh, the radio there, off the recording. And it's it's almost like we know each other. We do by the Holy Ghost. But I mean, this is exactly what I teach. And I tell them all the time, shut me off. Just shut me. Just get rid of me. Take a day and stop listening to me. Stop going to all these prophecy places. Get in the heart of God. Get in the word of God. Get in the face of God. Tune in to what he's saying, and then you start getting the blueprint, and you see it the way he sees it. There's nothing wrong with revelation and information that we give, and uh, you know, great, great people like Steve Quell and and others that are out there that are just really, really trying to get the information. Wh- whoever you listen to, uh, you have to have that. That's part of your daily diet. But there comes a time where, man, you just got to put that away and don't let it overflow you to the point that you're overcome by it and you miss the purpose of why I'm here. I'm not here for a bunker. I'm not. I'm not here to make it through the fallout. I am here for harvest. I am here because he said he is the Lord of the harvest. It's the only reason why I have breath. This is the only reason why you have breath. This is the only reason why you have this platform and God gave you what you have today. And that is to reach the least, the lost, and the last of this world. Folks, Brother, I'm, yeah, no, go ahead, Pastor, please. No, I, I, it, it, perspective. Perspective. How do you see this? How do you see this? Do you see this as dangerous opportunities? Or do you see this as the end? I look at it as dangerous opportunities. This is a dangerous opportunity. What an opportunity to serve God. He saved me and prepared me. And I was birthed on this earth for such a time as this. Brother, that cranks me. That cranks me. And it gives me hope and it gives me endurance to know, yeah, man, it's dark. And I, I've been telling people this for years. I don't like this. I don't like the prophecies that God gives me. I don't like what I see. But you know what? I've learned to live with it because that's the generation God put me in. And you. Amen. And folks, it's about bringing souls to the kingdom. I, I, I've shared this so often that if you've never led somebody to Jesus, you've never lived. Yeah. I, there, and I'm, I'm not, I know there are people that are stuck in your your homes, you're older, maybe you can't get out, but you can still pray for those that are out there. The oh, yeah. front lines have to have the rear support or they will never yeah. survive. Yeah. You're like the supply line. And and yeah. so keep that going, uh, Pastor. I just what what you just said. I I, I shared this a long time ago on the Remnant call, but I, the first time, or well, I've been to Africa a couple times, but I was about six times. But the first time I was in this this village called Mwembe, mm-hmm. and um, and they were leaving me down there. The village was about eighty percent um Muslim, you know, maybe twenty percent Christian, and um. They were leaving me there. They had there had been some people who had had their businesses burned. It's a village in the middle of nowhere, but it was there's a good bit of people out there in the middle of nowhere. And yeah. and I remember they were going to. We had been on a mission trip, and they mm-hmm. were going to go on a safari at the end. And I'm like, I don't want to go. I'm going to stay here and be with the local church here and help them out. And as they were pulling out, somebody says, "We're just going to leave him here by himself." <laughs> And yeah. it was at that moment, I mean, fear took over me. Yeah. And I, I won't, I'm not going to go into all the stories, but folks, long story short, I saw God work miracles. Yeah. I was afraid. I was uncomfortable, but I had to pray and rely upon the Lord. And when I got out of my comfort zone and I got desperate for Jesus, the Lord took over pastor. And it was so yeah. powerful. Because I had no strength in my flesh to carry me. Yeah. Yeah. He was just waiting for you to get out of the way. <laughs> I, I know. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, folks, yeah. Uh, please, uh, like Pastor saying, and Pastor, I want you know to, we, we, if you don't understand the hour right now, then you'll never understand. But when you're talking about these opportunities, yeah. um, you know, Jesus, I know, was in the bottom of the boat. Everybody was was screaming, you know, wake up, don't you care, you know, everything like that. But I find often that 
if you're never willing to step out of the boat, the Lord never gets an opportunity to say, peace, be still in your life. Right. That's right. Yeah, exactly right. You got to, you got to give faith the opportunity to work. Faith without works is dead. You got to give faith the opportunity to work. You got to put faith in employment. And that's one of the things, and faith is not talking just faith and words of faith and quoting scripture. Faith is corresponding action. And that's exactly what we're missing. And one of my clarion calls is to is to herald the troops to encourage the troops to to get people to go out and do things i tell folks all the time i don't care how old you are i don't care your age and your stage you can do something for christ you don't have to directly lead somebody down the romans road to get saved you you can go to a nursing home and just be there you can go to a jail cell and just be there you can pass out tracks put them in a 12 pack of bud do whatever you need to do to try to witness. Stuff it somewhere between a, you know, a magazine. Uh, make a phone call to somebody. Sow seed. Be a sower of the seed because not everybody who sows reaps. God does the reaping. He's the one that does the increase. Some water, some plant, right? And so my job is to be a sower of the seed. And I tell folks all the time. You don't have to be a Reinhardt Bonnke. You don't have to be a Billy Graham. You don't have to be these, you know, the, uh, an Apostle Paul. You just have to be faithful of the assignment that God has given you. And if we all do that, if we just get together and support each other, those that are watching right now, maybe you can't go out and do something. Support Brother Frank. Let us let his program expand. Let him be able to do more, help out more. You know, all of that matters. Because here's the coolest thing about it, Frank. God is a perfect account it. He's got the numbers perfect. He knows exactly what you did and I did. He knows every hair upon our head. He knows all of those things. And so if we just be positive towards the kingdom, in other words, do things to try to win somebody somehow, some way, God takes takes all the credit, but he also remembers it. He who loans into the uh, to the poor does what? Loans to God. And guess what? God pays back beyond your imagination. Not only on this earth, but also when we see him. So uh, my message, again, to folks is, is, is learning how to live, settle Babylon, know where you are, but it doesn't change the kingdom. The schematics, the strategy, the blueprint of the kingdom does not change because Biden's in office or because Putin's on the rampage or whatever, whatever, whatever. It doesn't change. So, in fact, it gets enhanced. It gets clearer as we move down the road. It's like Daniel. We begin to now see things we didn't see before. And that's exciting. That is exciting. And, folks, please, thank you so much for that. You know, supporting the Remnant Call is it just share this program with somebody. You know, we yeah. don't, we don't we 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 don't have any means to take anything or do that. But if you would just share this program with someone – Pray for pray for myself. Pray for um, Pastor Faircloth. Pray for Brother Benjamin. Pray for get people that have been on. You know, I'm extremely selective and only allow a few people to come on the remnant call because honestly, Pastor, yeah. I I don't trust a lot of the people out there today because I I I see one I hear one thing and I see some other stuff and so Pastor, I just want to say though, thank you for being here with us because. I, I do believe that your heart is is right uh and your 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 desire to serve the Lord is is what's needed in this hour. And um folks, I, I want you to please follow what's going on. Check out Pastor Faircloth. But Pastor, if you know, just in a reality check, um look at upon what's going on on the landscape. I mean, is there anything you could share with your insight of of where we're headed right now? Um that you know, as a country, because, you know, the thing is, we don't want to be surprised. We want to learn how to be in Babylon, but we also don't want to be ignorant of the, of the wiles of the devil either. Right. That's exactly right. And that, that, that's a, that's that Nehemiah thing. That's where you have your weapon in one hand and the tool in the other. And, and that's the wise thing to do. Uh, you know, America is, is, is in decay. There's no about, no doubt about it. We are uh, in a coma in many ways. We're uh, past life support. Um, there's just too much coming at us. The demonic convergence is, is 
you know, almost unspeakable as far as trying to analyze it on, on an hour program. But, you know, we're looking at an economic holocaust. We know that's going to happen. The dollar is already crashing. Uh, we're watching, you know, supply and demand and and we're watching people getting pushed out of homes and and vehicles and jobs. And, um, you know, it just goes on and on, the, the sewage that is out there. So we know prophetically that uh, America will be will be destroyed. We will be hit with a nuke. We know that we will be invaded. We know that the prophets of the past, and you can name so many you, uh, that that have spoken the demise of America, and we're coming to that point. Um, again, it's a dangerous opportunity. But having said that, there's also the glory of the Church of Jesus Christ. But it's not going to be the same as. Um, as as we've always known it, you know, we've always looked at the church as this charisma magazine, TBN, you know, Christian television type of, of, of Christendom. That's not what the true church is about. The true church is, is, is a church that's there in the midst of crisis. It's a humanitarian organization. It's a, uh, uh, an extension, a, a bridge to those over troubled waters. I mean, there's so many things that the church is that it's currently not. So what we have to have is a de- uh, the, the nation demantled, if you will, or disassembled, and we're watching that before our eyes. And then we're going to see out of that Babylon raised up, the beast system raised up. You know, the Antichrist is, is on the scene. He just hasn't been uh, revealed as of yet. You have the two witnesses. You have a lot of great, exciting things that are coming prophetically, and that's part of being aware. So you have realities on the ground that make you aware, but then you have prophetic realities you should be really aware of. And as you watch the both start to parallel, then you realize the time is near. And see, you know how to act. You know, as the sons of Issachar, they they knew the signs, they knew the times, and they knew the seasons, mm-hmm. and they knew what to do. Amen. They, they brought Israel out of the crisis or through the crisis because they knew what to do. And that's exactly what God's doing. He's raising up Issachar people in this final hour. He's raising up Nehemiahs. He's raising up people that are bringing us back. Uh, a few years ago, the Lord put on my heart the Ezra Project, which was all part of the Nehemiah Project. But Ezra was bringing back worship. He was bringing back the law. And, and that's exactly what we're doing. When we say the law, we're talking about the Word of God. Bringing back Bible basics, learning the Bible. And don't be ignorant and... Um, don't trust these guys. Don't trust these guys on YouTube. Don't trust these false prophetists and prophets. Find out what Jesus said in the Word, and and you won't be deceived in this hour. Amen to that. And it, Pastor, that reminds me. You know what you're talking about is going through these things, folks. We, we mentioned last week about pride. So often holds us back from humility. And and the Bible's specific in First Peter five um, about humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that you may exalt that he may he may exalt you yeah. in due time casting all your care upon him for he careth for you be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour whom resists steadfast in the faith knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world but the god of all grace who hath called you unto his eternal glory by christ jesus after that you have suffered a while make you perfect establish strengthen and settle you to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen that is contrary to everything you hear in the modern day pulpit right there what i read but it is saying exactly what the pastor is saying humble ourselves because there are dangerous opportunities it's it's, we're not just walking out here the devil is trying to kill the body of messiah okay but god is going to turn the turn the ship around on him and what he thought he was going to do to actually destroy us will end up strengthening us. And yeah. Pastor, thank you for tonight for sharing about this it, these dangerous opportunities, which are just opportunities to show God's glory. Yeah, we, for Brother Frank, we were born for such a time as this. There's no doubt in my mind. I'm a man of destiny. I believe in destiny. Uh, I don't believe in accidents. I believe that God is precise. He is perfect in all his ways. 
Yeah, and, and line upon line, precept upon precept, he is absolutely the master builder of the universe of all things, the creator of heaven and earth. And so if he is precise in his creation, he is precise in me. And so he's precise in you and, and the body of Christ. Those that are listening right now, you are not just floating around by accident and just bouncing around in this, this pinball machine, if you will, of terror. You have a purpose, and that purpose is found in the Word of God. That purpose is found in the power of the Holy Spirit. That purpose is found in understanding prophetic truths and realizing you are here. This is your time, your time, your time. God has raised you up for this, not for this propaganda, this false comfort church that, he, that Brother Frank was just talking about, not that message. That message is of the devil. That message is to keep us bound and keep us blinded and keep us deceived and keep us discouraged from, from kingdom principles and kingdom realities. Our, our, our destiny is found in what Jesus began to teach and to do. Acts chapter one, that this is, we're finishing the work. We're finishing his labor. Man, I want to run around my office right now because I get to complete what Christ started Amen. in my in my position, just in in my nucleus, my little part of the world, and then then add it to what you're doing, Frank, and then add it to someone else who's listening right now. And if we stay on the same page, even though our message may be opposite and different, and and all those different things that make us diverse, if the the kingdom message is the same. But brother, I'm telling you, that's critical mass. We're we'll be moving in a direction, not moving in a direction of a, of changing a nation, but bringing forth a great awakening, a great movement of His Spirit. Some people don't believe that. I believe that. I believe in a great movement of God's Spirit. I'm not talking about the crystal cathedral of past revivals and photoshopped and all that different stuff and the glamour and the glitz and the gold. I'm talking about in the trenches, in the hospitals, in the homeless areas, in war zones, in places of great famine and crisis and destruction. The love and the power of Christ is being evident. I know people who we support the 1040 window that are right now in the midst of the war and with Hamas and Israel and helping out and, and, and just being a blessing. And, and we're there in the 1040 window of Afghanistan. You know, those are my heroes. Those are my heroes, not these guys in these $10,000 suits that could give a rip. They don't even know your name. Man, I want to preach this thing. We, we, we've, we've got to get to the point where we follow Jesus again and smell like sheep and smell like the great shepherd. We have to. There's no other choice. You're going to. <laughs> you're going to. If you're a pastor, if you're a man or woman of God, if you hold a microphone, if you claim to be any type of preacher or orator for Christ, you're going to have to go through this. There's no doubt about it. Amen. And folks, if you're not familiar with the 1040 window, that's in the radio world known as the most gospel depraved place on earth, pretty much the 1040 yep. window. Yep. Um, and, um, but I, except maybe, I don't know if that extends over to North Korea or not, but I know it's in the Middle East and all that. <laughs> that's its own window. <laughs> yeah. It's another window. <laughs> yeah. But this is what's Great. We talked about, you know, th God's going to do his greatest work in the darkest hour. The best wine was saved for last. Right. The greatest things ever are going to happen when it looks like there's no hope. This is what I've been excited about, Pastor. The Lord's doing it again. He's reaching Muslims again without a Christian. Yep. Without a believer, through dreams and visions. Folks, if you haven't heard what yep. the Lord's doing, he's doing it in spite of us. Yep. I don't know if you've yep. heard about it lately, but it's yep. like it's all ramped up again. Yeah. And the yeah, Lord's, he, yeah. You know how he's doing it, Frank? He's doing it through intercessory prayer because he can do nothing. I don't want to get into the whole laws of warfare going back to Genesis but he set up the laws of warfare in Genesis chapter three with Satan bruising the heel and, and bruising the head. So, so there, there's, there's a law there, but God doesn't do anything unless he has a, a vessel. He has, he uses the church. And when we pray, when we pray for the 1040 window, we don't have to be there. Nobody said you have to be there. He can use angels. He can use dreams. He is using these things. We just have to learn how to pray. He said, pray the Lord of the harvest to send laborers. Well, we don't know what those laborers are. We don't know how that works. It could be angelic. It doesn't matter, does it? 
it doesn't matter. I mean, I, I've evangelized since I uh, I got saved. That, that's been my ministry. I've traveled to every continent but but uh, Australia, and and I want to win the world. That's all I've ever wanted to do. But I realized, brother, I can't be everywhere. Yeah. As much as I tried, one year I went to five different countries. I mean, I that's that's my heart. But I learned something. I learned how to sow seed. I learned how to intercede. intercede. I've learned how to take the globe in my hand and walk around my office and my home and pray and cry. And I don't know what's happened with that. Maybe one of those Muslim visions came from one of my prayers or your prayers. We don't know. That's not our deal. Our deal is to pray and let him be the Lord of the harvest. So you're absolutely right. These things are happening. Do you recognize, and this is for the audience, I'm sure you know, Brother Frank, but but there, there's roughly three, 4,000 languages still in the world that have never had the Bible translated. Mm, yeah. Never. And, and if I'm off on my numbers, I'm, I'm, I, go look it up. It's it's not too far. You look up the Joshua Project, a great missions organization. Okay, thousands of languages have yet to know the name of Jesus, have one scripture, one scripture translated in their language. I was in Nepal many years ago, same situation in the higher elevations where it took oxygen or a helicopter to go reach these people. There was no known Bible at the time. And here in America, we want to get raptured. We want to go home. We want to get out of this Babylon and get out of this mess when the world still hasn't heard. It's a selfish gospel we have. And I'm going to tell you, when we get broken, Brother Frank, when we finally break, and and I believe the next great move of God's Spirit will be through intercession. It'll be through the breaking, the crushing, and the interceding of God's people. It's called being a midwife. It's called giving birth. Can a nation Mm. be born in a day? Yes, a nation could be born in a day. How? Through intercessory prayer. It's coming, brother. I, I'm telling. You, I'm looking forward to the day when God shuts my service down, and we're on our face. I'm looking for a day you can't even get out of your car. I'm looking for a day when they have to pull on the front highway here, uh, the street in front of my church, and just say, "What? What is this?" They hit a force field, and what they hit was the power and the glory of God, drawing men back to Him. They don't need to hear me. They need. They need the power of God. So. Those are things to look forward to. Do you see? Do you see the perspective? Absolutely. I can live in Babylon, brother, and be mm-hmm. in revival. I agree. And, and folks, the Bible says, "Look, the gospel did go around the world once on foot." Back, yeah. um, they did it in about thirty years, roughly. There's maybe a little debate on that, yeah. but on foot, they took the gospel all around the world. They're gonna, it's gonna do it. Again, and this is yep. going to be the big one, but this is what you got to understand, folks. This can happen literally like a flame of fire. Yep. That's war. All these things are going to break down the barriers that have been holding back the gospel. And, and I don't know, Pastor, have you ever heard of Brother Yun from the Back to Jerusalem? You ever seen his book before? I have not. Oh, oh that oh, called The to... Heavenly Man, one of the I greatest so. books I have mm. ever read read Mm, okay he was just they didn't have the bible i mean it's it's a book i started crying in the beginning because he there was a man he heard of that knew they had the bible he walked through the woods he traveled so far and the guy wouldn't show him he just said can i just see it i was just crying like man we had the bible everywhere yeah yeah and anyways they they believe that the persecution that has happened to the chinese that god's been preparing them to take the gospel through the old Silk Roads between China and Jerusalem to reach the Arabs, the some of the hardest hit places on the earth, the Chinese. Yes. See, in America, we think it's only us. Right. God's got a people to finish the work all over. Right. You. I mean, and that's why we got to pray for them. We got to pray for our brothers. We can't absolutely. be so self minded or self closed, you know, and just say it's all about me and my Americanism, my American Christianity, man. Oh, you're firing me up, brother. We need another hour because I love the church. I love my Haitian brothers. I love my Cuban brothers. I love my African brothers. All the Russians, I love them because they're part of the body of Christ. And I can't go where they go. Yeah. Man, we got to, we just got to get out of this, this ignorant box we are. We're, we're, we're just suffocating in America because it's all about me and, 
and self-ministry and self-indulgence and self-help humanistic gospel. I'm I'm so I've been tired of it. It makes me nauseated when I when I hear this stuff. I, I, that's why I only gravitate around true, transparent, authentic Christians. Amen. That's it, brother. I'm not I am not investing in plastic bananas. Not doing it. Absolutely. And you got enough time. God bless you. Thank you so much, <laughs> Pastor, for coming on. Folks, please keep up with Pastor Faircloth on the Ignited Church Life. Um, Benjamin Faircloth, I think it all leads around the same places. You'll find yeah. both yeah. things. And then his YouTube channel, uh, sharing the latest things that the Lord's been laying on his heart. But you heard the heart of the pastor tonight. And the heart of the pastor is like, it, to me, is is the most important thing. It's that letting go of the fears and the cares of this world and allowing God to open up opportunities to do things we never, ever thought could be done and we could never do in our flesh. And yet God is waiting to do them through us. Yeah, It's going to be one wild show here at the end and God's going to win. He's going to win. Brother, thank you so yeah. much for coming on. Please keep up with him. This is Pastor Faircloth and Brother Frank on the Remnant Call saying to everybody, good night and shalom. Trumpet in time.